Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today, and it's Debbie Adams. She is a best-selling author, and she's here to talk to us about herself, how she got started, and tell us a little about her books. And she has some special things she's going to you know, talk about today that you're going to find very interesting. So I'm very excited to uh, introduce her onto the show. And so Debbie, why don't you tell me a little about yourself and what you do? Thank you, and thank you for having me on your show. Um, I am originally um, from Middle Tennessee, and I grew up on a farm. Um, and um, as a child, I, you know, uh, played in the barn and and all that stuff. And you know what you do when you're when you grow up in the country. And my dad used to my dad used to take me to um, the local library. And my dad is an avid book reader, and um, I guess that's where I got mine from. And I would read books on top of books, um, you know, growing up as a child. Yeah. And um, as we we're talking about earlier, my niece and nephew, they're they're going getting into that now too. Right. And so um, I started um, writing as a child. And just little, you know, how children are, they get ideas or these little stories in their head and they'll write it down. And I, back then, I, I did keep like a little folder of all the little stories that I wrote. I don't know where they are now. They're mm -hmm. probably, probably thrown away by now. Um, but I, but I believe that led me into um, writing now. And, um, you know, God has plans for us in the very beginning and I and I do believe that the way my life has went that he started a long time ago when I was a child um to form me into becoming a, an author now and um because I mean I still love reading books and but I love writing books I love helping people and you know I've always loved helping people and that's why I write books I want to you know help somebody in you know by having them read my books you know encourage them or you know motivate them to be better or something you know I just my purpose is to uh, you know show them Jesus and to, to uh, help them in whatever situation in life they're facing. So you really like to help people that are, are going through obstacles in their life, overcome their obstacles. Is that what you try to do is, is to really show them ways they can self-improve themselves? Like what type of self-improvement, um, you know, uh, therapies and things do you um, emphasize on? I like, I like helping people, um, you know, like, like, you know, a lot of times you hear about people helping the elderly, you know, go mow their Mm -hmm. uh, yard, buy groceries, you know, I, you know, I do that. And if I see, you know, if it's a, if I have a friend that's in need, you know, I will do that and, you know, provide them with whatever they need, groceries, money, whatever, if right. I'm able. And God has, I believe God has put a heart of compassion in me to feel compassion for others. And, where, you know, I don't feel like, oh, I have to help this person again. But and in my books, it's I show how I was going through this or I was going through that. Yet I called on God and I know God is always there and mm -hmm. you can't always rely on me. Right. And, and because I'm sure you're like myself have had people or friends, you know, that were said they were going to help you with a certain thing. And, you know, either something else came up and they couldn't, or they just, you know, just didn't show up when they were supposed to. Right. And, and so that's, that's basically what I show in my books, how if we, if we turn to God, no matter if you believe in God or not, if you turn to God, just call out to him because he's always listening, right? You know, for for our our calls, and and you know, like we talk on we talk on the cell phone all the time, and but you know, God's phone 
it's never off. He never sleeps. So that's what I want to, you know, the emphasis I want to get to people in my books. Now your first book, what is your first book called? My first book is called Unlocking the Code to Bliss, A Southern Veil Secret. And it's right here. Right, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And this is um, about our bodies. And at that time, I was, it was post-COVID. And you know how everybody was locked, not locked down, but um, stayed home and, you know, couldn't go, you know, very many places. And if, if anybody was like me, all, they ate, you know, all the time. And because they were home, you know, didn't have nothing else to do. Right. And so I did need, you know, to get rid of a few pounds. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not a heavy person, you know, I'm probably about your size, but I did put on, you know, a few pounds, you right. know, eating donuts or whatever you know and so um I got to thinking it well that was right before I wrote my book and so I got to thinking about it and you know we need to um have a healthy lifestyle and I was like how can we have a healthy lifestyle we have to do it um you know the way God created our body to be and then I did a lot of research on that you know research you know different parts of your body and how they work and how mm -hmm. your brain and I, I I found a lot of things myself that I didn't know right. and you know about how your brain is connected and how you know your stomach and your intestines and and you know and you, I'm sure you've heard the word uh, you know clean gut and you know and I talk about intermediate intermediate fasting and mm -hmm. which I I do that and um and so that book is basically um you know talking about your body and intermediate fasting and then I put some examples you know of how I got a healthy lifestyle you know from going outside and getting the sun and the, you know in the sun just being outside will help you give right. you energy and um you know, and then the subtitle was a Southern Bell secret. And, <laughs> and since I um, live in Tennessee and, and I, I, we eat a lot of Southern food. So I did, I did put, you know, um, I think a chapter or two in there, you know, about Southern bales and, you know, how, what they eat and, you know, and their their talk, you know, and you know, just to get away from just strictly, you know, people might call it a diet book. It's not a diet book, but right. you know, people might think of it that way. And so, you know, just sort of get, you know, a little little humor on the side as well as, you know, some good information. Right. You know, if people wanted to, you know, get in shape but not really get on a diet. Right. Right. So, now, what is the age group for these books? So, um, I would say um, probably um, teenagers or preteen um, okay. through adult. Yes, yes. Because my niece um, at the time was 13. Mm -hmm. And so she read my first book. And, um, I'm, you know, she, she, I mean, she understood it, you know. So, so it's, it would be preteen. And anybody, you know, under preteen that can, um, you know, that is um, a little older, I'll say a little older minded. Yeah. And, you know, they could possibly, it could possibly, you know, work for them too. Right. No, it sounds very nice. It sounds <laughs> like a great book. Very educational as well. And yes. do you have a lot of pictures in your books also, or is it, is it, uh, is it basically chapter by chapter? It's it's chapter by chapter. Um, I didn't put pictures in there because you know I, at that time I was just learning as I went because you know I self published that, one. and um, you know looking back I probably should have you know put pictures in there you know to as I was talking about different things. But um, no, it's just chapter by chapter, and it's got ten chapters, and Excellent. it's about um, it's about a hundred pages. 
Yeah, you know, I, I don't really feel it's always necessary to put pictures in it. I've I've written over uh, 20 books and many of them were bestsellers. And I didn't put a lot of pictures in most of my books. You know, there was a few books mm -hmm. that I put pictures in, but sometimes pictures aren't really necessary. It's the words we use and how people visualize them as they read it. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, those pictures really evolve in a, in a person's mind, I feel. You know, it's 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 the author speaking to, to the individual through, the, you know, through their writing and really it's the person's mind who takes off and and really and visualizes the 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 picture or the scenario or you know the whole the whole aspect of what you're trying to you know educate that individual on really mm -hmm. evolves in the person's mind so actually mm -hmm. you know pictures aren't always necessary you know it's, it's yeah. just you know if it's the educational tool the message you're trying to get across that's the most important so i think that's great the way you did it Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the way I write my books, it's as if I'm talking to that person, mm -hmm. like we're talking today. As right. you're reading my book, it's and I've even had um, some of my coworkers have bought my book and um, I've had them even say, you know, it's like you're talking to me. And I like that kind of, I like that kind of writing. Yeah. And but, you know, that's that's the way I am. I. I mean, I'm not the per kind of person that would write a book, you know, and just put all this information down. And I'd rather be the kind that is, um, what's the word, I guess, relatable mm -hmm. to people. You know, I would rather, you know, write like, hey, I'm talking to you and this is what I got to say, you know, kind of thing. Right. So, you know, it would be more um, felt in their heart, you know, by me writing that way. And, you know, my mother said that when I was write, writing little short stories, you know, growing up, yeah. she, said, she said, you had the same writing style back then as a child. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said in the beginning that I believe God started me out right back then to, you know, to become an author now. That's so. amazing. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We the way we become as as a child and as we evolve as grown ups, a lot of our traits and characteristics stay with us. And unless we mm -hmm. we purposely change them, we we don't really change a lot. We just mature as we get older, or we're supposed to mature. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, a lot of the things that we did when we were ch children, and a lot of the ways we thought and the, and things how we constructed things are the same way as we get older, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's funny how we take those things with us. And, um, you know, it's, I'd love to hear more about your second book. Can you tell me a little about your second book? Sure. My second book kind of went, followed my first book because, you know, the first book I was talking about how God created our bodies. Mm -hmm. And then my second book, um, is talking about the promises of God. Right. And it's called, um, I'll get it up here. There it is. It's called Divine Promises, Trusting God's Faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And I've got a testimony of faith. And God spoke to me and told me um, that I needed to share my testimony. And, and so, he um, told me, you know, that I needed to show others how faithful he was to me in my life. Right. And 15 years ago, I got cancer. And so I'm 15 years cancer free. Praise Congratulations. God. Thank you. And so that that was, you know, the main reason to um, write that book. And I called it Divine Promises. And God did give me that title too, um, because like we talked about earlier, you know, you might have friends that say they're going to help you and they let you down. God will never let you down. God is the divine. And mm -hmm. that's, that's where that title came from. And it is so fitting. Yeah. And there is thousands of um, promises in God's word. And so I just picked 10 that I thought were beneficial that went with um, each story that I put in the book. 
Right. And with, with my, my cancer story being, you know, the top one and that, you know, is the promise of healing. And, um, and then during that, God gave me a, um, Bible verse that is still, it's, it, it's the, it's the verse that I carry with me in my heart every day. It's, it's my life. I made it my life verse. Yeah. And that is, that, yeah, that is Proverbs three, five through six. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding right. and, and he will direct your path. And he, he has directed my path through the cancer, through a lot of different things. And right. one, once another story in my book is um, God's promise of protection. Mm -hmm. And there was a tornado um, and it was sitting right on top of our house. I was home alone with uh, my two dogs and my cat. My husband was um, had taken our car to get the oil changed or something, and he was stuck there. And I knew it was bad weather, but I didn't know, you know, a tornado was coming. Yeah. And then I heard that tornado had tornado warnings out. So, you know, I gathered all of my animals and myself and, and, you know, my um, radio and whatever in the closet. And yeah. um, the, you know, then I started praying. Then I heard what sounded like a train. I never, I've never been through a tornado, heard what sounded like a train. And I'd always heard that's the sound of a tornado. Wow. So I started, you know, yeah, I started just, you know, um, praying, you know, and, uh, and that song, um, um, I can't think of the name of it, but, um, God keep us safe till the storm passes over something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I started singing that song and then it wasn't maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. I didn't hear anything. Everything got quiet. Yeah. And so I waited till I heard, you know, on the radio that it was safe. And so I got out. My husband had came home at that time. We were outside talking to our neighbor. And he said that he was um, outside on his patio. And he said he saw the tornado sitting on top of our house. And he wow. said, and then, yeah, and then it just moved. And I said, oh, my goodness. I said, that was God's hand. And just move that tornado on. And, yeah. um, and you know, I talk about that in my book. And, you know, that is, you know, God's promise of protection. I mean, oh, whether yeah. it's a tornado, whether you're in a car wreck or whatever, you know, God is going to be there. He's going to protect you. Oh, yeah. And I also um, talk about um, one of my favorite promises is the promise where God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. And, you know, like I've talk, talked about um, a few minutes ago, you know, God's always there, mm -hmm. whether we trust in him to believe that he's always there. He's always there. He's yeah. always taking care of us. And, you know, and, and he and I believe he has angels on this earth, you know, oh, yeah. to take care of us. And I mean, there have been many instances where I've been driving down the road and, you know, you know, how drivers sometimes can get a little crazy and yeah. people just almost run into me, but then they straighten up and go on. And so, yeah. you know, I always, when something like that happens, I was like, thank you, Lord, for putting your angel there. Exactly. Because, yeah. Because I mean, he, he protects us in more ways than we really realize. I do yes. believe. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, you know, I, I think it's important to have these type of books to remind people, you know, to care for themselves. Cause basically when I hear you talk, the first thing that comes to my mind is taking care of ourselves, both mentally, physically, and spiritually, you know, your message is mm -hmm. basically looking at, you know, on the inside and really you know, focusing on taking care of yourself and, and being honest with yourself and looking in mm -hmm. the mirror and seeing like, just, you talked about weight loss and you talked about, you know, but even just, you know, losing weight can help us physically, can help us mentally. Mm -hmm. It could help us, you know, spiritually, because we feel better about ourselves health wise. We, 
probably improve, you know, our energy levels and so forth. And it's all about taking care of ourselves, you know, taking the initiative to improve ourselves as a human being and, mm -hmm. and, and be able, and once you improve yourself, you'll be able to accomplish more in life. And that's the kind of message I hear from you when you speak about your books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is definitely the message I'm trying to get out. Yes. You know, and I think that's great. And I think people need more inspiration like that because I think a lot of people get stuck in life or they don't have enough of self-esteem to believe that they could actually improve themselves. They, you know, sometimes when you live a certain life and you're, you're a certain way your whole life, sometimes you don't really realize that there's always options. There's always options mm -hmm. to improve. And some people don't think they have the ability to improve it. We all have the ability to improve. And it's just taking the initiative and having the courage to move forward in life. And it seems like your books are basically, you know, helping people open up and open their, their eyes to realize mm. that they are mm -hmm. you know, between mm -hmm. our higher powers and between ourselves, the connection between the two, that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. So true. You know, I think it's great. Now, if you want to tell some people like some takeaways of everything we talked about today, like what are some things you really like people to understand between the between, you know, the stories you just told us between your books? Are there, you know, what what message you want people leave in on, on understanding some some things that people could actually use today to actually in, input into their own life to, to actually help them improve and move on and become that better person that they are capable of becoming? My main message would be to always, always be willing to move forward. Mm -hmm. Whatever state you were in, there's always, you might think, oh, you know, I'm I've always been this away or, you know, I grew up, you know, with this, you know, around situation around me, but you can overcome anything. Yes. You can't do it by, by yourself. No. But um, just, I mean, my motto is always being say yes and move on, you know, yes. like say yes and take a step toward, you know, a better future or, you know, um, you know, you have to do it one day at a time, yes. one step at a time. Right. And, and, you know, like I mentioned earlier, whether you believe in God or not, God, God is everywhere. God yeah. is, you know, with, with us, whether we believe, believe in him or not. And so my next message would be to believe on God and yeah. trust in God and believe that he will take you out of whatever situation that, you know, that you're in, that you're struggling with and get strength from your inside. And it will help you, you know, with your outlook on life. Right. And I mean, I mean, you talk about, you know, my inspiration and all of that. And, but th there have been times, and I talk about it in my book, there was a time where two years straight, there was, I was in the valley. There was always something going on. And yeah. there were days when I basically had to push myself forward, you know, to make it through the day. Yeah. And I would, you know, I would call out to God, you know, it's like, you got to help me. You got it. And he did, he did. And so, you know, my, that would be you know my main message you know is to look inside yourself and find the strength and call out to God to give you the strength to move on and he can help you you know to <clears throat> get get out of I'll say get out of the valley and on the mountaintop yeah um <clears throat> and also my next message would be that you need to know him personally Mm -hmm. Because this this world is going to end one of these days, and you know you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. You know, and you know that's that part. You know, people have to make it. That's their choice. They have to choose mm -hmm. whether you know to accept him or not. And so, yeah, that would be my two main messages that I would want to give. I think those are very inspiring. You know, I I think we all 
you know, everybody comes from all walks of life and, you know, but we all have one common denominator, you know, it, and it doesn't really matter, you know, um, you know, my grandfather used to say all, all roads lead to one God and, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not about the religion you believe in. And it's not, it's, it's more about, um, you know, the, your faith, your, your faith in that mm -hmm. high power, your faith in, in, in living in, in love, peace, harmony, goodwill, being grateful, being kind, you know, the, that's the message. That's the message, you know, that, you know, any, any religion really emphasizes on is, is mm -hmm. being good to your neighbor, being good to yourself, being good to the people you love, you know, and, and showing an act of, of, of goodness, you know, to others. And that's where it all boils down to. It doesn't matter. I don't think what religion we are, it matters how we are to ourselves and how we are to others. And in the end, mm -hmm you know, that really, it all comes back to you at the end, you know, mm -hmm. what we put in life is what we get out. And, you know, exactly. And I feel the best thing in life is, is, is a feeling of accomplishment to be able to help others. You know, when I'm able to help another person, uh, the feeling is, is a, a, a feeling that I couldn't even, even express in words, but knowing that I helped improve another person's life is the best feeling. And people don't realize that you could improve someone's life just by giving them a compliment. You know, you see someone mm -hmm. and they're, they're doing something and you compliment them on, on their good work, or you compliment them even on the pretty shirt that they're wearing. And that can, that can make a person feel great the whole day. And that could boost someone's self-esteem and make things look at, make them look at life a little bit differently because they feel good. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just being able to be kind and to be loving and to be caring. And that's what it all boils down to. And I, I mm -hmm. think it's good. I think it's good with the message that you're trying to give across. I like the books. The books sound great, you know, and, um, you know, I'd also love to hear about where we could find these books. Now, you're you're a best selling author on Amazon, which is very impressive. <laughs> Can you tell us a little about that. Um, <clears throat> My first book, well, I. I I think I mentioned that I self-published it. Um, and then my current book, um, Divine Promises, I uh, went with a publisher. And so he gave me a little bit more marketing tips um, that I didn't know the first time. Mm -hmm. And so we um, launched the ebook first. And the ebook is the one that went bestseller. And then we launched the paperback and the hardback. And it went bestseller. Um, we launched it on a Friday and um, the ebook. And by Sunday, Sunday mid morning, it was already bestseller. So a day and a half, you know, it became bestseller. And oh, I, I was just, I was just so excited. And um, I, I thought, wow, that didn't take very long. That's great. And, yeah. And then, you know, when my, um, and paperback and hardback when that got launched on Amazon I had a lot of sales on that too because some of the people that had already bought the ebook had read the ebook and so they was like oh I want the I physical want the uh, the physical yeah the physical copy so um and you can um you can only find my first book on Amazon mm -hmm. but my current book you can find it on Amazon and every online bookstore and it's not in any stores, but it's all online and it's even in Canada. And mm -hmm. um, I think it's chapters um, bookstore in Canada. And um, then also you can, um, I have links to um, Amazon um, on my website mm -hmm. that you can click if you want to, you know, buy it straight from Amazon. And um, I'll go ahead and give you my website and it's debbie adams books dot now dot site and that's s-i-t-e that's great i'm so excited for you this is <laughs> this is wonderful i think you know what you're doing is great i think you're on the right track and i think your books are going to help lots of people and this has been very inspirational now, is there anything you'd like to to say to the audience before we end this? Is there anything that comes to mind? Anything that you'd like to share? Um, I would like to let people know there is a third book coming. And nice. Yes. 
and it will be out um, sometime in February 2024. And so it's, I'm not, I've already got a title, but I'm not going to say what the title is, keep people in suspense. Um, but <laughs> it's going to be even better than um, the divine promises. And so, and, and other than that, what I would say is um, you're going to love both of my books, um, you know, go check them out, go check out my website and, um, um, buy my books and you know get my set give me some more sales <laughs> and don't forget to give her a testimonial because she loves to hear about testimonials and uh she'd love to hear everybody's input and uh so basically the best place probably to find your book the easiest place would probably be on amazon i assume mm -hmm. All right. and, and yeah and anybody that buys my books please put a review on amazon because that that helps sales too this has been amazing. You know, I, I really commend you for all your, your hard work. You took a dream that you had really a, cre a special creativity that you, you carried as a child and you brought it to life, you know, throughout your, you know, as you were growing up, every, all your experiences in life and everything you endured in life, you kind of put it together and you helped others, you know, and now your books are actually helping others improve their lives and move forward to have better lives. So I give you kudos for that. And mm -hmm. I really, you know, say thank you for, you know, we need more people like you who are out there trying to teach people how to become better, you know, and how to overcome in life. Because with life, every everyone has a story, everyone has stress, everyone has difficulty in some areas of their life. But learning how to overcome their obstacles in life is the challenge. And having people like you who have, you know, a certain um, view on how they can, can, you know, help many people. You know, we all have our own beliefs and we all have our own ideas. But sometimes when people from an unbiased opinion, you know, give their way of this is how I did it. You know, sometimes that can make the light bulb go off and say, wow, maybe that will work for me. And then they try it and then it does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's the trick is, is being open minded and and being able to read other people's information and books and ideas and go on their blogs and to learn. And, you know, you don't always have to apply everything, but, you know, there are things that you could read and you can apply certain things to your life. And, you know, just little tweaks in our lives can make such a big difference and can change our lives tremendously. So it's always good, you know, to always be open minded. And always, you know, listen to other people's ideas and connect with, you know, their thoughts and their ideas to help you become a better person and to be able to make your dreams become a reality. Because that's what it's all about. It's about improving ourselves and then moving forward so we can take our dreams and aspirations and turn them into a, an actual reality so we could live a happy, healthy and productive life. So Debbie Adams, thank you so much for coming on the show. You have been a world of inspiration. I thank you so much for taking the time to write these books. And I commend you on your achievements and for becoming a best-selling author. That's a very, very hard thing to do and you've accomplished it. So congratulations. And before we go, thank can you, you just so tell much. Oh, you're very welcome. Before we go, just tell everybody one more mm -hmm. time your um, website, because it's always good to hear it one more time. I'll put it on the description also for people. Okay. It's Debbie Adams Books dot now dot site. Thank you so much. Everybody, remember, you can go to Debbie's website and it'll be in the description and any comments or anything that you have to share, leave them in our comment box and we'll be, sh we'll be uh, sure to tell Debbie. And then also you can go on her website and contact her directly on, in her contact box. And she, I'm sure she'll be happy to, more than happy to answer anybody's questions or have, you know, help them in any way possible. Debbie, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a pleasure. It is being my pleasure as well. All right. You have a great day. Thank you.